what you guys got another video here for you on how to choose or buy the right cpu cooler for your next build in 2020 now whether it'll be air cooling or whether it'll be an all-in-one closed loop wall cooled system or whether it be hardline water cooling whatever you want to do we're going to be talking about that in this video and we're not just talking about these coolers here we're talking about all air coolers and all closed loop water cooled systems and we'll go through the pros and the cons and which one is right for you in 2020 and what you should be looking at and what your expectations are for what you're actually spending your hard-earned cash on so that's what we're going to be talking about here first so first okay so let's talk about uh budget first how much do you want to spend that's the thing you have to look at first of all some of these coolers can be pretty expensive now generally uh, the air coolers come in cheaper than the closed loop wall cooled systems unless you're buying some sort of chinese brand uh, nzxt corsair and these types of coolers generally come in more money than the air coolers again air coolers will vary in size uh, this is not the biggest but it's a pretty beefy size and you may have trouble fitting this in certain cases so you have to take that into account as well obviously to try and compete with the all-in-one coolers air coolers have grown in size as you can see here there's a massive difference in size uh, you know and the reason for that is because they have to dissipate the heat and get rid of the heat and the only way they can do that is by getting bigger and that's the way it works so budget is a key part now if you're on a tight budget and you're using the stock cooler is the stock cooler good enough for what you need it to do and the short answer to that is yes you can use these stock coolers this is the entry level stock cooler from ryzen you can see there's no copper on here there's no copper piping or anything like that no rgb and it will just cool the cpu down and do the job that you need it to do you don't need to upgrade this unless you want to do other things like overclocking rgb maybe some of the ryzen processors uh, come with a cooler that does have rgb and does have copper plates and copper piping and and that is the 3700 and 3800x they do come with a better cooler than the lower end types of coolers but if you're buying a lower end chip would you want to go out and spend all this money on an expensive cooler that would be a bit foolish in my opinion it's a bit silly so budget will uh, come in play into a lot of this the next thing is overclocking if you are overclocking then you probably will going to need to replace this even though this does allow you to overclock to a degree if you want to really get serious about it you might want to up your game a little bit uh, and get something a bit larger that's uh you're going to do it like you've got noctua that do some good uh coolers um this one does a pretty good job uh, the uh, reven uh, do a, a bunch of different coolers as well there's loads of them out there on the market that will do that uh, scathe uh, will do uh, some coolers there the mujin 5 and stuff like that they do some decent coolers as well have a good look about and find one that uh, suits your pocket again these will always be cheaper than the water cooling solutions because they just are the problem is they come at uh, the cost so what is the the trade-off to keep these cooling super low for these air coolers once you start getting beyond the stock cooler once you get to these sort of level they grow in size by quite a bit and of course that comes with its own problems and let's go through some of those problems i.e weight this adds a lot of weight to uh, the build and onto the motherboard they come with back plates and stuff like that to take the weight of the cooler because that's going to be quite heavy this one's quite light but there is some really heavy ones on there uh, this is quite a heavy cooler this comes with two fans and this is quite heavy and this will have two fans one on each side and you can see also the, the style in here there's no bend in this it's just a straight down the middle whereas this version here uh, does have a bending system on the pipe work here also copper piping is under here but it's been powder coated and some people say that this can affect the cooling as well just having them copper will sometimes be beneficial but people want if you want a whited out bit or blacked out and you want it all done then something like this uh, there's plenty of them out there on the market um, be quiet do some 
uh, which is the Dark Rock series. They do some really nice coolers as well. So let's talk about the size then. Obviously, radiators, they will go up in size. 240 mils, you can get the single 120 mil uh, rads. You've got the, this is a 280, which is quite beefy. So it's quite a beefy uh, radiator on there. We'll take a closer look at those in a second. But you have to weigh up what's going to fit in your case. So if you're looking for a MIDI tower case, then these are going to start looking really silly inside there because they're going to be filling up the whole of the case and it will just look stupid. So unless you're going for a full tower case, then these big, uh, big um, CPU coolers are going to start to look really stupid inside there. And they're not going to be much room for you to move around inside there with your hands and stuff. Makes it a bit more difficult uh, to put in. So clearance issues is another problem. Let's talk about clearance issues. So when you start going up the food chain with your coolers, you're going to start noticing, let me just take these fans out the equation here so we can have a closer look. With the fans on there, you're starting to get some width. And of course, you can see how this design has uh, started to put a little bend in. And the reason for that is because once you start putting these coolers on, with the fans, they start to go towards the RAM slots. And of course, around the CPU socket itself can be very, very tight and difficult to install. Now, some of the ones I've installed over the years have been very, very difficult. And nowadays, they've got this little hole that goes down the center and it comes out down here and it allows you to tighten the screws. They all have their own method of mounting. So some are better than others. Where this might come into problems is on the heat sinks around the motherboard. You may start to hit that and you may need to remove one of the fans or you may need to move the fan up like this because it can't sit like that because it's hitting the shroud or something like that. That's what you have to work out when you're going for a, a larger cooler. Again, with some of the coolers, you'll see they've got these handy little screw holes that go all the way down through the base and allow you to tighten it down. This is nickel, uh, not copper, and it's got the nickel pipe, six pipes. Good cooling, again, but this will have its own problems because it's straight, so you have to make sure when you get fans on here, that's gonna start to get pretty wide. And again, we've got another fan on the other side, so you're now getting some serious width here. So when you're looking at that there, on that um, bit there that's going to be here obviously but the width of it's going to be quite wide so that's going to start to come out so you may only be able to have one fan on here you just have to work out what fits in your build uh, the good thing about uh, air coolers against closed loop wall cooled systems is there's no leaks there's going to be no leaks from this whatsoever uh, also low maintenance just take this outside blow it out and she's good to go very little uh, uh, sort of damage can happen to these because if the fan breaks, you just replace the fan. And generally, they you can put different fans on these normally. So if the fan breaks, you just replace the fan, put a new fan on. Whereas if this breaks, the pump fouls, it's finished. If the solution inside here becomes you know dries up or clagged or whatever inside there and it doesn't work efficiently enough it's finished there's no maintenance on these they are a throwaway item and these sometimes come with a five-year warranty three-year warranty uh, you know one-year warranty or no warranty depending where you buy them and what brand you're buying so you have to bear that in mind as well and we'll talk more about the water cooling in a second i just wanted to cover all of this as well so no leaks or anything like that, pretty much bulletproof, just uh, away you go. These are cheaper as well, as I've said, over the water cooling uh, types of solutions. Uh, limited cooling potential is probably another thing. Now, people might disagree with me, but at the end of the day, when you're talking about a fan that's going to be on a big body like that, it's a massive big thing. How far can you go before it reaches its limitations? There's a certain size limit to these coolers. So you can still buy the slightly smaller air coolers, which will be 
uh, obviously slightly quieter because they'll only have say one small fan on them uh, and that might be sufficient enough for what you need so you don't have to go all out and get the biggest thing on the planet you know what I mean to fit in your case I mean it's all about what you need and your requirements so that's another thing so yeah so let's move on to uh, case sizes and radiator sizes. Let me move all these air coolers out the way and we'll take a closer look at the all-in-one coolers and we'll talk about that a bit because we've covered quite a bit about the air coolers, I think. Okay, so let's talk about all-in-one closed-loop water cooled systems and even hardline water cooling and whether it's right for you and what you should be sort of considering. Okay, so first off, let's start with the closed-loop systems. You can see here, there's a 280 mil uh, radiator on here. With It's got two fans on here. And what you need to do is make sure whether you want to spend this amount of money. These are not cheap. They're over 100 odd pounds and it's going to cost you a foot quite a bit. But what are you trying to do with it? Is it just because of the RGB pump? Or is it because you want super cooling and you want it a bit more quiet and also you want to overclock? Then if it's them, then by all means go for something like this. It's a nice cooler. Again, uh, take into account the radiator is quite a beefy radiator. Will it fit in your case? What case are you going to be using? Are you going to top mount it, front mount it? You have to work that out before you start buying it. And don't just look at the manufacturer's website and hear it's a 280 mil and then you get your 280 mil in there and think, yep, that's going to fit. You need to make sure there's enough clearance inside the case because Sometimes when you go to the manufacturer's website, they will tell you it's a 280 mil, but the full length of it is a bit more than 280 millimeters, and that's where you can run into uh, problems. You need to measure from end to end and make sure you've got the right information. Get the information from the manufacturer's website and also get the information from the manufacturer's website of the case to make sure this will fit. If you're good to go from there, are you gonna be doing push and pull? Do you want fan here and a fan there, fan here, fan there, push and pull, and basically pulling air and pushing air through and to get the maximum. That means more cabling, more fan headers, all that sort of good stuff. You've got two here, you've got a load of connections on here, power, pump power, and uh, stuff like that. These are a lot easier to mount. As you can see, very small, easy to mount system, much more easy than some of them big cumbersome air coolers, very simple back plate on mount it easy job done other things you have to take into account is the pipe work here these are very restrictive you can't really do too much with these they, they pretty much go straight down and that is that closed loop walk system you can't top this up you can't uh, do any maintenance on it on this particular model uh, there is a model out there that you can take the nipple out here and put some fluid in and top it up and stuff like that this is a complete sealed unit and you're not going to be able to do any of that stuff once this pump fails the, the whole unit's finished. Once the fans fail, you can replace the fans, but if the solution inside becomes non-existent anymore or a bit clugged up or congealed or stuff like that inside here, it's the end of game. You're gonna start seeing temperature drops and fluctuations and stuff. Pump may be failing, that's the end. How does this work? Well, it goes down one end, goes down this chamber here, into this chamber, you'll see a little line here, goes in this chamber, comes round, cools down, through the radiator, the air blows over the fins, cools the solution down, it comes back out, up the pipe, and back into the pump, which then spreads across, not the outside, but internally across here, cool solution across the plate and cools this plate down, which then cools the CPU down. And this all happens very, very quickly. These go right up in different sizes. Now, hardline water cooling is some of those wall cooled units you'll see on those PCs for Bitwit, Jay's Two Cents, uh, Paul's Hardware, some of those channels like that. They get sponsored to build a PC with all those components and they build on those uh, PCs and they look absolutely awesome, but the maintenance on them is super ridiculous. Unless if you're using it for your main daily driver and it's sitting on the floor gathering dust and whatever, you're gonna be cleaning it out, you'll be draining the loop. Any problems with your PC, you will have to drain the loop. Uh, and stuff like that moving it around is a bit more difficult compared to an air cooler this is pretty much okay to move around it's a sealed unit but they're the things you have to take into account they do look fantastic 
uh, but again you will need to do some maintenance on them you may need to drain the loop every now and again clean it out flush it out and put some new solution in maybe bacteria gets in there fungus and stuff like that you'll get all sorts of stuff happening uh, with those things now obviously some people build them for the channel and they have them in the backdrop and they don't use them on a daily basis some of them just switch them on for the video shoot and then they turn them back off and that's totally fine but if you're using it for your mainly drive daily driver for gaming and video editing and stuff like that they can be a bit more hard work if you ask in my opinion over an air cooler or something like this so it's entirely up to you uh, this does come with a bit of rgb on there so if rgb is your thing it can do that you can turn the rgb off as well again just get your sizes right and what you're trying to do these generally are a bit more efficient and uh, you will get a bit better overclocks with these you will get a better overclock with a, a water cooled system uh, with a hardline water cooled system uh, the world's your oyster you can just put in as two big radiators inside there if you wanted to um, you've got no worries about if the pump fails you can replace the pump whereas this you can't it's finished you know what i mean it's a sealed unit it's a throwaway item whereas the hardline water cooled systems it's totally upgradable you can constantly fix it and upgrade it whereas this is pretty much when it's done for it's a throwaway in the bin and buy a new one Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. Hope this video has been useful. Hope the information has been useful. There's quite a bit there to digest, so you might have to watch it a couple of times, but all the information's there for you to decide whether closed loop water cooled system's for you, whether hardline water cooling system is for you, or whether an air cooler is for you. Depending on your size, you can choose whatever uh, floats your boat, really. It's entirely up to you, but anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.